Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lee Boone, and in my 18 years at First Presbyterian Church, I've been fortunate to not feel as if I've walked through too much of a wilderness. Maybe a few hikes through uncharted territory, such as in Spanish 3, or picking which college to attend. This is partly due to the congregation and the community of First Press. Everyone here has helped raise me, just as they promised when I was baptized. Starting off were my days in youth club, which brought me closer to some people that I call my best friends, especially Whit, who I would say has helped me explore more parts of this church than I could ever imagine. Because of youth programs, I have friends that I can always count on, along with leaders who I look up to. Matt, I always appreciated you putting time and effort into our youth and planning fun ski trips. Along with youth at church, Monday night Bible study has always been a highlight. In high school, conversing, laughing, and often getting off topic with friends, including Elizabeth and, of course, Jack Morton. Confirmation also shed light on ideas I had never thought about in Christianity. And being in a class with people my age, along with our mentors, helped grow my understanding. Apart from the classes, my favorite part was right before I went to confirmation class. With Big John Howell, I would go to Penny's and have chicken fajita subs or set traps for beavers. Another big part of understanding the church for me was serving as an elder last year. Even though it was rough waking up on early Sunday mornings, I learned more about how the church worked in one year than my whole life at First Presbyterian. More than anything, my parents have pushed me to question and understand my faith. On Sundays, when I did not feel like getting out of bed, they still woke me up and made me go to church. <laughs> my parents' faith has helped guide me along with learn and formulate my own opinions about my faith. When thinking about my faith journey so far, I came to the conclusion that there is not a single thing I would change about it. From walking in on Sunday mornings when I was little and Martha Sue would give me a quarter, to seeing Miss Andrews smile, asking me how tennis has been. Everyone in the congregation has always been supportive and caring. Thank you all for being the best church family I could ask for the past 18 years of my life. Hi, I'm Peyton Hatley, daughter of Mike and Jill Hatley. And while I haven't gone here all my life, I've been in church since as long as I can remember. Growing up, I've been to at least probably four different churches. My first church was Bethlehem Baptist in Aqueduct, North Carolina, way down in the deep south. I went there from the time I was really little to about first grade. And then first grade, we switched and went to Pleasant Grove Baptist, which I spent a lot of my time there from first grade to high school. So I learned a lot there and made a lot of good friends. And then when high school started, I came here and also attended New Mount Tabor United Methodist Church in Bridgefield slash Millingport. To me, the denominations don't matter. You're all learning the same thing. And while there are minute differences, you're pretty much all sharing the word of God with each other as a family. At each church, I learned nice life skills and other things that I could carry on with me my entire life. Like at Bethlehem, I learned how important family and church friends are. At Pleasant Grove, I got to go to Caswell for at least three summers and made lifelong friends there and learned so many things about Christ. I still talk to those friends from Pleasant Grove and the adults. And here, I got to experience Bible study on Monday night with Jack Horton and Elizabeth, which is probably the highlight of my week. I've got to come to uh, youth on Sunday night with the Jim Hesley and Dorothy, which is probably the highlight of my week as well. 
Um, just get to laugh and have a good time and a lot of things I never thought you could have at church. And when I come here, I really like it and it's probably one of my favorite things. And it's definitely been a long faith journey, but I think I've found where I fit in the most and I really like this church for only coming for a year or so. So, about my journey into the wilderness. So, I might not be an expert on the actual wilderness, but I am an expert on fear and anxiety. I've dealt with anxiety for as long as I can remember. I was clinically diagnosed with extreme anxiety my freshman year of high school, which isn't really great because freshman year is probably was the hardest year of my life compared to senior year because I went to I go to Greystone, so trans uh, transitioning from South Stanley to Greystone was a big transition. So there was a lot going on there. So I do understand fear, and it's reared its ugly head many times in my life. But since I've grown older, my fear has definitely lessened, and I've had my friends, my family, and my community fall back on. I'm very thankful for everyone who has let me fall back, and when I've needed it, been there for me. It was definitely a lot, and now I'm going away to college in the fall. I'm going to Presbyterian College in South Carolina, which is a whole other state away, so I'm kind of nervous. There's a lot of fear there because I don't know the area yet, but I'm very excited to start this journey, and I'm also very thankful for my parents who have let me, who have helped me throughout my entire life with the fear and anxiety, and my sister and all my family because my sister is my best friend, and she's definitely helped me through life and the struggles I've faced. Um, it's going to be really hard to leave her in the fall uh, because she is my best friend. So we're making the most of it right now. And I'm very thankful for everyone here, my family, my friends, all of it. And I'm super excited to start in the fall. Let me get my speech out real quick. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Whit Snugs, and uh, my senior year has been the most exciting and stressful year of my entire education. I'm living in the bustling city of Washington, D.C. currently, and I'm going to a rigorous high school and having a great time. However, I greatly struggled with the work I had at the beginning of this year because I transferred schools, I had to do several rigorous classes in order to get the credits I needed to graduate on time. On top of that, I had a time-consuming senior capstone project, and I also had to get into college. Furthermore, I also continued to be dedicated to several extracurricular activities, including track, cross-country, swimming, Model UN, and I also did a school production of Saturday Night Fever, which you may or may not have seen on Facebook. I did not make this year easy for myself, and there were many times at two in the morning that I feared that I would not make it through this year. I do not say this to complain about the year I've had or to flaunt my busy schedule, I hope to make a connection. This year has been a wilderness for me. It has been a time of fear, unanswer unanswerable questions, and tribulation. But I will cherish this year in my memory for the rest of my life because it is an incredibly important milestone in my journey of faith, of my life. I believe that this year, this wilderness, was a time for me to be molded by God. Just like any difficult in life. But I do not believe that God puts us in wilderness, in the wilderness, for no reason, or to simply test us. God doesn't waste time like that. Being an athlete, I like to think of God's process like training in sports. Now, if you want to become a stronger, faster athlete, you're not going to get there by taking the easy route and keeping things painless. I believe that that is why God puts mountains in our life. Because for every mountain we climb, 
the better climbers we become. And the harder the climb, the more we appreciate the summit. I am nearing the summit of a journey I started so many years ago. And looking back at where I've been, I can truly appreciate what my journey has been. There have been so many people that have helped me to make it to where I am, and I'm thankful to all of them. I know I would not have been the same person if not for scouting, and I would never make it to my eagle without friends like Lee Boone, who I've known for almost 12 years through scouting, troop leaders like Stacy Hale, Ronnie Yarborough, Alan Love. These men were never fun in games. Well, no, not always. But they made sure that I knew what it meant to be a good, godly, godly man and that I had what it took to be an Eagle Scout. But how can I talk about being a godly man without mentioning my church family here at First Presbyterian? My faith journey has gone hand in hand with my journey to my Eagle. And this, this church has been at the precipice of my development. When I think about my hometown, this church, this family, is one of the first things that comes to mind. This church has been a part of my life, and my faith journey, since I was very young, and God's hand was present all the time I was here. So much of this congregation has given to help raise me and nurture me in the word of the Lord. I've spent much of my time participating in youth programs and events with this church that have given me many great memories However, my experience is not only with the youth program. I've also done, participated in men's prayer breakfast, and I particularly like to impose upon Matt's dinner Bible studies. These programs of this church not only gave me many great friends and experiences, but it has helped me to learn about God and build an ever deeper relationship with God. God has been tugging at me all this time to be a part of this community. Even when the allure of my couch was very strong. When I was blind to the importance of these seemingly little church events, God had sight and I would go. God has been working through this church and each one of its members to change this world for the better. And I am one that has been changed for good. Thank you to everyone in this church family. You have helped make me the man that I am today. And the thank you that must be saved for last is the one for the two people that have sacrificed the most for my betterment. My parents have dedicated their entire lives to making sure that I had the best opportunities I possibly could. They have led me to be the best that I possibly could and given me every resource I needed to achieve. I know I would not have my eagle without their persistent encouragement, and I would not be the same person I am today. Both of them have been pivotal in my growth as a man and as a Christian, and I cannot thank them enough for their never-ending love and support. Remember when I said that God was pulling me to church. Well, my parents were the arms he worked through. They have been here for me every step of my journey with my faith, my schooling, and my development as a person. They deserve the credit for making me everything that I've become today. I owe it all to them. I was, as I look forward, to the mountains I have ahead with college and my life. I have no fear. How can I when I'm so blessed? God has given me a church family filled with love, friends that support me, and two loving parents who adore me. I know that when I climb, I can climb with sure footing, and when I slip, 
There will always be someone to catch me. Thank you to Matt and Elizabeth for leading this fantastic church. Thank you, my church family, for always loving me. And thank you, both my parents, for all the amazing things that you do. Thank you very much.